plan, the long range plan for the city. Uh, urban residential development is envisioned for that area that's between the west side of the city limits near the intermodal and the intermodal facility itself. And there's a lot of business office that's envisioned. It's not clear that there's market support for these uses, but this is what's on the future land use map as it sits today. Just a few things about the selection process. Garter purchasing policy, uh, this paragraph, it's paragraph X in the policy, states that legal, financial, engineering, and consulting services and, or any other service that may be considered complex or technical in nature shall be provided as determined by the city council upon a recommendation by the city administrator. This uh, paragraph goes on to say the way to procure these types of services to, is to issue a request for proposals and that the uh, criteria for selecting a proposal is cost is part of that, but cost is not the only consideration. In other words, the, the point is, is that cost is not the primary consideration <coughs> necessarily. There are the considerations. And we're not bound by law to select the low cost bidder. This is not like a public works project, in other words. So the selection process that we undertook uh, in March of this year, we posted the request for proposals on the community development webpage. We also, uh, in April, posted an addendum to the RFP with a deadline for the proposal set at May 3rd. In addition, both were published in local newspaper, National, the National American Planning Association website, and the APA state chapter sites for the Southern Plains and Southeastern states. So there was quite an effort made to solicit proposals for, for, uh, for the comprehensive plan update work. Despite all that, we received proposals from five firms, which we were pleased to, to have at least a field to choose from. The internal selection team then narrowed that, those candidates down to three per presentation and interview, and those three came and presented those to a, an internal uh, committee of staff. The staff <coughs> committee selected Housie Levine Associates due to their experience with similar communities, their innovative stakeholder engagement methods, and the quality of, del of their deliverables. If you look at the packet, um, they provided some examples, their proposal itself, it's a very nice looking document, and that's really the quality of their work. All the, all the work looks like that. So the winning proposal or the selected proposal for your consideration is the team of Housio, Levine and Associates and the HDR Engineering. HDR Engineering is a, a firm that is based in Omaha and it actually the city of Gardner uh, has utilized HDR for some of its traffic engineering other work. Just a little bit about Housio Levine. Uh, founding principles are on this sheet, better community outreach, commitment to creativity, graphic communication, technology integration, client satisfaction. And we really saw that in their presentation. Uh, they tailored the presentation to uh, Gardner. It was clear they did their homework. Uh, it was not a, just a canned presentation. They have innovative stakeholder engagement methods and they, show, they showed those. They just gave a very solid uh, presentation and have a solid record. HDR Engineering, uh, I won't <laughs> belabor this point, but they are one of the, the largest and most respected architecture and engineering firms. Uh, I've had some experience myself with them in the past in the Northwest. So uh, National Planning Experience, we have recent relevant experience. I'll show you a couple plans that, that uh, Housio Levine has done for some communities in the Midwest that are comparable uh, to Gardner. They have a lot of experience with comprehensive plans. And this list shows the national experience they've had in a variety of states. <coughs> One of the communities they did a comprehensive plan for is Downers Grove, Illinois. For this uh, comprehensive plan, uh, they won a gold award from the American Planning Association, got a planning award. Downers Grove is a, I believe it's a suburb of Chicago. Yes. Jackson, Missouri is a community in southeast Missouri. Uh, it's about the same size as Gardner, maybe a little smaller. I think it's an historic community. Um, 
they did a comprehensive plan for it. Also for Muskogee, Oklahoma, and Marion, Iowa. I did follow up on all the references. Uh, the uh, agencies that were the clients for those plans, and they had good things to say about about their experience with uh, Housel Levine. So the proposal, uh, again, it has uh, intensive stakeholder engagement. That's really key to a comprehensive plan and making it work and really making it truly represent a vision for the community and developing a community consensus around where the community is going to go. The plan elements include land use, which includes housing, commercial, and industrial, and not just not just a guess at what's possible or what we'd like to see, but also this proposal includes a substantial market analysis to back that up. So the elements that they propose, the land use map, it will be based on what's possible in terms of market demand or, what, or the forecast market demand. Keep in mind that a comprehensive plan is a 20-year, typically has a 20-year time horizon, but that, but it does, it will include the forecast of what is supported by the market. Transportation, open space, recreation, environment, community facilities and infrastructure, community design. Community design is, is those things that tend to be on the aesthetic, the aesthetic side, side uh, but it might address such things as proper, attractive gateways to your community. As with any comprehensive plan, there's a lot of interrelation among these elements. An attractive community might be seen as an economic development uh, initiative because it attracts people to the community. Sustainability and implementation. Implementation, a comprehensive plan is implemented by effective development regulations, uh, solid investments in infrastructure, and good programming and services that are going to be delivered to implement the plan. A plan is not adopted and then things happen on its own. It requires implementation measures that are undertaken. Once the plan is adopted, if you have an effective staff, they will help implement that. They will bring proposals to the governing body to support those things to implement the plan. They're proposing a schedule of about 10 months. I, I think that's a really fast schedule. I think we, we were thinking it's 12 months or more. When you look at the timing of this, that puts us into next summer, into the spring. Uh, and this is something that the community really needs, in our opinion. Scope of work, uh, there's a seven-step process. If you'd like to follow along in more detail, you can. I won't go through all the details unless you, you have specific questions, but attached to the contract is Exhibit A, which is the scope of services. And this really goes into detail on each one of these steps. Starts off with a project kickoff, initiation, and outreach. That's really a meeting with the uh, department heads, also with the uh, elected officials, um, and with the Citizens Advisory Committee. We have not uh, organized the Citizens Advisory Committee, but that is something that does need to be done fairly soon. Like any plan, it's going to have existing conditions analysis. There's a real strong, I mentioned before, stakeholder engagement component. Uh, that is part of the, that happens throughout the plan, but it's really, uh, it's really uh, implemented in force, I would say, at the beginning stages of the plan. Next, visioning, community vision, goals and objectives, draft plan, plan documents and adoption, an implementation plan, an action agenda, and matrix. So the proposal has a schedule of about 10 months, budget of $85,000. The $85,000 budget includes everything except some printing costs, some publication costs. Uh, there was a question raised about what those would be. Uh, we added we have added uh, to the contract to be, to be executed by, by the, the administrator and, and the uh, consultant language that specifies how many documents would be printed uh, within that budget, and it's 10 for each phase of the, each of the two final phases where there's a draft plan and a final plan. We've also estimated what the outside cost of the budget might be to the city 
we're not talking thousands of dollars, we're talking probably less than $1,000. If there was a lot of demand for documents, there's a way to control those costs as well. You can charge for the cost of those documents.